All right, welcome everybody. We're gonna go through and work on trying to do an Incaminati style portrait. Um, this is the portrait that I've chosen. I've got it on my iPad and I'm gonna paint up here. Um, first couple things is the simple palette that they use to kind of get set up, which is burnt sienna, titanium white, and cadmium orange, cadmium green. We're just gonna use those colors. There may be more colors in here, and that's something you would get to in a second session, but what we're gonna do is just focus on setting up this portrait, drawing it out in that style, which is kind of like very loose and quick. That's what we're going for. So with that stated, what we're going to do is kind of, I'm gonna bring this up so you can see more of this here and we'll set up our colors. There we go. Um, so I will take this portrait and put it over here when you go to look at what I'm doing. Um, and I can maybe, well, I'm not gonna really use a palette. Um, let's go this way. That's better. So what I like to do for these portraits, first off, um, I'm gonna use burnt sienna and that's all I'm gonna use at the start. I'm just gonna either put some in or wipe it away. And I like to put the paint right on the canvas for this because it's a study portrait. It's not a, a kind of portrait where you're going through and doing too much. It's pretty simple. Um, I'm gonna get some medium. So I like to use Neo Meg from Gamblin. Um, let's see if I can find a spot for it. I'm gonna have to put it over here to the side on a pallet because I don't have anywhere to put it over there. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna put a little dollop here, not much, just enough to loosen the paint a little bit if I need to. All right, so basically from here, I might get just a little bit on my um, brush. You can kind of see it there. That's it, that's where I'm gonna start and I'm just gonna go through and start to block out this portrait. So I'm gonna get some paint on there and basically I'm using a number three master stroke bristle filbert. With the filbert, I can hold it this way and draw with a thin line or I can hold it this way and have a thicker line. So right now I'm gonna kind of have the thinner line and I'm trying to just find the size and the placement for the head. That's what I'm mostly worried about at the beginning. So I'm just drawing out the head. That's all I'm worried about. Getting about the right shape. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm doing this visual. I'm not trying to measure. That's kind of a um, big Incominati style choice that Nelson Shanks used to teach was the idea that you know you need to get good at figuring things out visually so you don't lean on the crutch of always measuring everything. There is a time and a place to do both, I think, but I do think that there is some good to be gained by just drawing and by just doing this for now. I'm gonna figure out the middle of the face here. Um, I'm looking at her eyes. I am going to do a little measurement just to meet because I, I was thinking that I feel like her eyes are just a little bit above halfway. So if I measure this from chin to eyes and then eyes to that, it should be just a little bit above her head. So kind of up just slightly higher. Um, from here, I'm probably going to try to block out that ear. I'm using quick, light, straight lines that's all i'm trying to do at the beginning is just build up quick light straight lines if i have something i need to wipe away i'll just grab a rag and do that so this isn't about really using much medium at this point right now it's just about putting paint on or wiping paint away so kind of back to our whole idea of kind of a simplified wipeout. I may try to get the, the necklace and some of the things that I see 
or wearing, but I'm not going to do that right away. So that's a pretty good size. Thinking about, you know, my rule of thirds vertically, horizontally, where do things line up? She's looking to the right, so there's a little more space on the right um, so that her face isn't right up against the edge. Um, and from here, I'm going to just start to say, okay, my estimate for the nose. Not a very long nose. Then my estimate for the line of the mouth. Maybe the, where's the eyebrows? Let's estimate the hairline. There's, there's hair up the top, but she's kind of looking up just a little bit. So we see a little bit. When you look up, your eye line goes up and we see more of kind of the under chin. So maybe I'll trim that a little bit. And this is light and loose, so I can change things. If I say, oh, look at that space, it's way too wide. Her neck looks too thick. Let's pull it in. That's a little bit better. That's a little more graceful. Um, maybe I'll estimate kind of what the shadow looks like under here. And we'll add our other colors on top of this. But right now, we're just worried about drawing. We're drawing with paint right back where we started at the beginning of the semester. We're thinking about, you know, a portrait, looking at what we're going to paint. This maybe swoops back just a little bit more like that. Then the hair's on top right there. So that's my new estimate right there. And like I said, anytime I want to take a rag, and let's even do that so you can see it. Grab my rag. Just wipe away what I have. This has been primed with just a coat or two of acrylic gray paint. So that I have a cool for a base, and then I can draw with this burnt sienna, which is warm. So I'm going to start to kind of find a little bit of the nose, the edge of the nose. There's a decent amount of space between the edge of the cheek and the edge of the nose. So I don't want to let the nose get too close to the edge. Feeling kind of an angle, something like that. I'm starting to think about the, the T of the face where you cross the eyebrows together and then show the angle of the nose coming off of that. It helps to stay on that center line. I think the center line needed to move over just a little bit to the left. I think I put it too close to the right. All right, so we've got that. This is basically the middle and I think the inside corner of the eye is gonna happen somewhere in there. And the other one is going to happen pretty close to where the nose is. And we are looking kind of mostly straight at this portrait. She's not looking too far up. I think we're seeing just a little bit. So if this was horizontal, maybe she's looking at, you know, 5%, 10% up, just barely above horizontal 100%. Still got to play around with that nose. It's not sitting just right. Coming down the philtrum, finding the upper lip, the corner of the mouth right near the edge. And then the other corner, I'm going to sit just a little bit lower and more towards the inside corner of this eye. I'm kind of finding those lining up more or less. So in the beginning, I'm really trying to keep angles simple. I'm not trying to outline the perfect lips. I'm not using 
my idea of what the lips look like, I'm going to use what I see. Exactly what I see. Trying to find those shapes. Base of the lower lips, those are moving and curling back towards the corners. It's got like just a little bit of an opening right in the middle of her mouth there. Nice shadow right underneath this. So I'm going to start using the side of the brush there. There's a shadow down here. And I think I might need to just drop that chin down a little bit. A little lower than it is. So we'll get this built up here. So notice I'm drawing, I'm still drawing. Get that roundness of the cheek there. That same thing is going to happen over here, but we're just seeing the side angle of it. Sometimes what I will do with these is at the end of the painting, the very end when I get pretty close to done, I may turn around and um, grab a burnt umber and just kind of push some of the darks just a little bit darker. Um, because there's times where you just don't get it right. And burnt sienna is kind of on the light. I'm more used to using burnt umber, so um, sometimes I don't love the color that it presents. There we go. So most of this is through the pressure of the brush. I can push hard and get a lot of paint, or I can have a soft touch and get a very light um, amount of paint. Um, overall, I would say that this model has very kind of dainty ears and has, you know, ears that are a little bit on the smaller side. Kind of redrawing that again. Shadow in here. Usually your ears are lining up with your eyebrows and your nose. If I'm looking at this and I kind of do that same up angle, it's lining up with the nose, the other one is lining more up with the eye line. I'm not trying to differentiate anything. I'm only putting value where I see value and not trying to um, separate things yet. We can do that when we start to build up the light. Sorry, my chair is squeaky, so we will hear that as we go through. I might go through and kind of try to do this in some different stages. So kind of like the drawing stage and maybe getting some block in on some of the shadows. So shadow more up and above the eyebrow and eyelid here on the inside. And that kind of fades as it goes down. So lighter touch. We can have more of a strong eyebrow there. It turns out when it goes past that edge. So now I'm scrubbing a little bit with my brush. Scrubbing is going to eat your brushes up a little bit. If you kind of pull your brush up and just kind of keep pulling, you might lose a little less. But if you repeatedly take your brush and go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, it's going to eat up the bristles and they'll get short and very springy. And that may be um, something you're not used to and you're not trying to do with your brush. So I try not to do it too much. Definitely 
definitely a nice shadow underneath here a little bit on the cheek and so in this portrait there's a nice warm light coming from over here and a cool light coming from this side so we'll be able to show that pretty well i think with even just having a few colors So building up a little bit it's like a light where the orange is hitting and then anywhere else you're getting a little bit of that light shadow edge showing up his cheek as it turns down and over Gets a little bit of value. I think I went a little bit too long with that. I've got to kind of pull some of that away. I don't want her to look like she has sideburns. Definitely does not. A little more paint. Scrubbing a little bit, so that's going to eat my brush a little bit. Versus if I just kind of pull a little bit more, that you should be better. Very dark back in here, underneath the ear and near the edge of the jaw there. Try to see if I don't start to describe where some of these you know, different parts of the hair exist as they're kind of coming over and then wrapping back towards the hairline inside. some of that out a little bit this is going to be tricky she has very complicated hair so that is definitely an area where you know probably letting it be a little simple and then slowly building some detail into it is going to be important here coming off the corner of the mouth underneath the lower lip edge of the nose a little bit right in that fold next to the nose um, I'm gonna put a little bit of the shadow in the ear now I don't have to be a hundred percent exact, but I don't want to be wildly off either. It's a little darker. Overall, I would say that this is pretty good setup. So maybe we'll go ahead and take a little break, come right back, and we'll start in with some light and shadow and starting to add in some highlights and some whites so we can start to see how the portrait's going to look. 